Hey folks, this is Matt once again, just doing another vlog, and uh, I swear the next time it will be like Red Plan, I'll land those reviews, but I want to do a vlog, mainly for one piece of story, but I fear as I'm doing, I'll go into the movie news. But unfortunately, you know, for the past, you know, few weeks and stuff, we've seen some good people pass away, like Richard Lynch, great character actor from like Invasion USA among others. Ernest Board Nine, greatly missed. Uh, Richard Zanuck, who is a producer of Jaws, among many other films. And most recently, Mr. Sage Stallone, yes, Sylvester Stallone's kid. Um, the star of Rocky Five and Daylight. Again, Stallone's son has passed away at 36. Way too damn young. Yeah, he passed away at 36 and from an overdose of pills. And either way, it's just really sad to hear that. Um, that was the main thrust of making this video. I really wanted to give my heart out to Sly, to Mr. Sylvester Stallone. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of Stallone. And despite anything I would have said about the upcoming Expendables 2, oh, I'm looking forward to it, then I'm not... Whatever, this is real life stuff. And the fact that, you know, previously he he was just at the Comic-Con with Arnold and all these guys promoting Expendables 2 at the Comic-Con panel. And then, you know, his son's dead. Passed away from overdose of pills. More, I think, painkillers or something like that. And it's a real shame. My heart goes out to Sly... Uh, the guy has had some rough stuff. I know he has one son who I think is autistic. I remember one time, I think he had a, a baby girl or something that had a hole in her heart. I may be wrong. And now this is just Slice had a tough time with his, his family. And my heart goes out to Stallone um, and to his family with the loss of his son. Um, again, he played Rocky's son in Rocky Five. So, my heart really goes out to him. Um, so, just a little toast. <clears throat> Rest in peace. So, that was really uh, the sad news of today. Again, I really feel sorry for Sylvester Stallone for losing his son. Um, I remember reading up, apparently he's really devastated and it's understandable. So, my heart goes out to him and everybody. And I would stop the video there, but I don't want to be in such a downer mood. So, I'm just going to the other movie news. But I just wanted to get that out there. But like I was saying, the, the Comic-Con has been going on. And a lot of stuff has been happening at the Comic-Con. For example, they talked about Coastal Recall, Looper, and they also talked to, they talked about a film called Elysium, the new film by Neil Blomkamp, who directed District 9 with Matt Damon, and I don't know if this picture is going to work. Of course, because it looks like there's a nuclear explosion. But I'm going to try to see if I can. Ease this down a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll do it. This is what Matt Damon looks like in Elysium. He's got all this metal stuff around his arm. He has this gun called the Tim Rail. What's really interesting for anyone who wants to be wise is yes I'm wearing shorts. I always keep saying that just because. But uh anytime I think of a rail, I always think of the rail gun and eraser. So I'm like, is he gonna have like a rail gun from eraser? Is that what it is? A Tim Rail? Just really interesting idea. Uh, I just wonder how that's going to play into it. What's going to happen with that? It's just a really interesting idea. Uh, 
there I'll try and get the picture back up but yeah Jody Foster was also in it and it's basically talking about uh, this floating space station dubbed Elysium uh, Damon's character is a wisecracking blue collar worker who interacts with the world with a few minutes of footage. Damon's character gets infected during a chemical accident. He's told he only has days to live, but he thinks he can he can get proper treatment on Elysium. Well, that's an interesting idea. He gets sick, he's gonna die, and he needs to get into Elysium to sort of upper class people and he's gotta, you know, get there to stay alive. They mix District 9 with Mad Mats with the Terminator, but his story finds an emotional hook. Well, that's cool. I look forward to that. I mean, I like District 9. I like Matt Damon. I actually do like Matt Damon. And, you know, to see what the director of District 9 comes up with, with a bigger budget, it's going to be really interesting. So I look forward to that. I know there's supposedly there might be a Twilight reboot as if we need that. God. Son of a bitch. I did see the new footage of the Total Re not Total Recall, the Robocop. It's like a viral marketing thing, a Robocop. Where you have the they showed the Ed 209 in all CGI. Only it's not called Ed 209 anymore. It's called ED-209. Not ED-209. ED-209. What, like e dicks 209 times. It's like, we can't call it ED-209. We have to call it ED. And it's not Robocop. It's, stay tuned for the RC-2000. I'm like, RC? The Transformer RC? I thought that was a female. Oh, R.C. as in RoboCop. The R.C. 2000. I'm like, why is it 2000? We're already in 2012. Shouldn't it have been the R.C. 3000? The hell, what do I know? No, the R.C. 2000. <sighs> Shit. R.C. 2000, yeah. It sounds like a... F Might as well be the fucking Transformer. So yeah, I thought it sucked. Christopher Mintz Plaza says that Kick Ass 2 will shoot in September. So you can take that for what it will be. Ken Jeon's Mr. Chow will have a bigger role and Hanover 3. Why? We don't need him in a bigger role. Apparently sometime soon there's gonna be a brand new trailer to Skyfall. That's pretty cool. I did see the new trailer to Oz and Sam Raimi's Oz, the great and powerful, starring James Franco and Mila Kunis. And I will say right now, Sam Raimi, you fucking ripped off Tim Burton in a bad way. You watched the trailer to Oz, the great and powerful. Doesn't that make you think of Alice in Wonderland? You watch that, it's like, is this Alice in Wonderland 2? It looks just like Alice in Wonderland. You ripped off Tim Burton, Sam Raimi. Sammy boy, what the fuck? So, I, I don't know. The idea of a prequel to The Wizard of Oz, I mean, I don't know. I'd rather just go see Return to Oz. Just not, I don't know. I like James Franco, but just the idea doesn't do it for me. It really doesn't. For any Power Rangers fans, apparently there was a 20th anniversary Comic Con panel of the Power Rangers. <laughs> um, I didn't grow up with Power Rangers, so I could care less about Power Rangers. But for those wondering, they did have I did a Comic Con panel, and you actually had Walter Emmanuel Jones, the original Black Ranger. Uh, you also had Alex Hartman, the Red Ranger from Nickelodeon's Power Rangers Samurai. Th 
you had uh, Paul Schreier, who was joined by his former castmate Jason Narvi, the skull to his bulk, so bulk and skull. I think he had the creator or what some of the head guys. Not really. Ali Deepo, President Saban Brands. I think he had one more. I can't remember who the fuck it is, but I, I know the woman who played. I think the Yellow Ranger. She passed away, but uh, I'm surprised they didn't just try to get the others. But I guess they're like, fuck that. But that's cool. I won and decided, hey, you know, it made you famous. Go for it. Like I was saying before, there was the Expendables 2 Comic Con panel, which was actually a very fun one. Even though Van Damme, I heard Van Damme was going to be there, but then for some reason he wasn't, so I don't know what the deal is. But you had Dolph Lundgren, Randy Tutor, Terry Crews, uh, Sylvester Stallone, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger made fun of each other like throughout most of it, like... They asked Stallone what's his favorite Schwarzenegger film, and he first says, Junior. <laughs> and his favorite, Stop and Mama Will Shoot. Then, also, then I made that it was actually Terminator 2. But then Arnold would, like, say stuff like, you know, just, you know, are you guys, like, recording, you know, but don't tell anybody, but when I came over here to America, uh, Mr. Sylvester Stallone was my English teacher. <laughs> so if you want to blame anyone, blame him. <laughs> and Sly was like, yo, ow, I'll be back. <laughs> we need to have a spelling bee or something. <laughs> so they were having a lot of fun with each other. It was really nice to see Arnold Schwarzenegger back. He would say lines like, it's not a tumor. And, you know, he say the line from Conan, crush your enemies. Um, gave a lot of praise to Sly, to the rest of the cast, and uh, talked about the first time Schwarzenegger and Stallone met, where Stallone was like, who is this guy, you know, and I thought his last name was a joke, and I threw flowers up and landed on him, and Schwarzenegger says that Sly's mom went up to him and said, are you a piano mover? <laughs> like, it's a lot of fun, I'm sure it'll be up there. I'm sure if you look more, you'll find it, but I... Uh, I did see, I did find more clips of it, so I saw pretty much the whole thing, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I know I, I bitch about Expendables 2 because of, you know, from what I understood, it was PG-13. From what I understood, it was PG-13 from the start. Apparently, that's not going to be the case. It is going to be R-rated. Uh, then, you know, not sure about Van Damme. Can Van Damme pull it off? Uh... Hearing that, you know, Jet Li wasn't going to be in it too much, it was disappointing. William Hemsworth, yes, I would prefer a Jess Beepman, Olivier Gruner, stuff like that. But seeing the trailers, seeing the TV spots, and seeing, you know, stuff like this panel, I really got to say I give my hats off to them. So um, I will say I look forward to that. I will say my opinions change on that. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint. Um, I'll also say that uh, I also look forward to Dread, not in 3D, I don't care, but to Dread with Carl Urban. I know people say, well, man, wait a minute, you didn't like Punisher Warzone and this and that. Here's the thing, though. The big reason why I don't like Punisher Warzone is because I don't like the lead guy. I don't like Ray Stevenson. Now, the CGI blood I made fun of, I will say, though, since then, I've kind of grown more accustomed to CGI blood. I'm still not the biggest fan. Like, I prefer practical effects. I will always prefer practical effects. But I will say CGI blood doesn't get me as mad as it did long ago. Except once in a while, I'm like, well, why couldn't that be practical? I mean, it's, you know, I still feel that way. Although, so Punch of Warzone, if I watch that again, the CGI blood won't be one that I'm like too hung up on. Except that stupid thing with he shoots a bazooka and a guy disappears in a puff of fucking smoke. And maybe you see a body part. Maybe. But uh, that that I don't buy. But the other thing okay, I can deal with it. I just I don't like the lead guy. I do like Carl Urban. I like Carl Urban in Pathfinder. I like Carl Urban in Doom. I like Carl Urban in Red. He was one of the only things I liked in Star Trek. I know people are like, what? 
I'm sorry, I thought Star Trek was going to be a prequel, and instead it's fucking Earth 2. Shit, you know, Earth 2 bullshit. I didn't want that, but that's me. And I don't, I don't care for the guy who plays Kirk. I think you could have found a better actor, that's just my opinion. He was fine and unstoppable, but that's the only thing I've seen that I've liked him in. That's me. Um, other than that, uh, I'm just looking through. I did see that trailer for Man with the Iron Fist. Could be a time waster. Let's see, confirm. Kung Fu Panda 3 is confirmed. I was disappointed with Kung Fu Panda 2 because I liked the first one actually, but I was disappointed with the sequel. So we'll see. David Slade exits Daredevil. So now 20th Century Fuff Face are trying to replace him. Uh, apparently the director of Chronicle, Josh Trank, is moving forward with the Fantastic Four film reboot. I haven't seen Chronicle yet. Because there's really no places around here to rent stuff right now. And... I'm kind of. I just have a personal thing against Netflix right now since it did help take that store away. I mean, but I will sometime, just not anytime soon. But I will. Don't believe me, I will. Imagine my two is making a lot of money, unfortunately. So Chan Tim's going to get more work, even though he's one of the worst fucking actors I've seen in my life. Chan Tim, you hear this? That's a better actor than you, Channing Tatum. Yes, I like 21 Jump Street. I, so what? I like one movie. I don't like Tim the Elephant, but I like the crazies. Every shitty actor has at least one movie that you like, you hope. Same with directors. Even Uwe Boll. I don't like Uwe Boll. I thought Rampage was decent. That don't mean shit. One out of blank is not a good ratio for anybody. Fucking magic, Mike. It pissed me off with the G.I. Joe 2 shit. You know, it fucking pissed me off. But I do look forward to Dread, though. There was a, there's actually a Red Band clip where Judge Dread's shooting the shit out of people in slow motion. I thought it was really cool. Like, bullet going through here and out someone's cheek and... That's been getting some positive reviews. People say it's like the raid. Well, they started writing the film before the raid. So you can't blame them for that. And honestly, I like the raid, so fuck it. Bring on more movies like the raid. But it started before the raid, so you can't blame it for that. Uh. I'm trying, I'm just looking at other news. Ed Helms will play Rusty Griswold in the new Vacation movie. Ed Helms, he's the guy with the glasses in the Hanover films. He's the guy who's not Zach Galifianakis or Bradley Cooper. I don't understand, why couldn't you just get Anthony Michael Hall? I think that would have been cool. Get the Rusty from the first film. Anthony Michael Hall is a good actor, get him. I don't understand, you know. Is Ed Helms really a big box office draw? It's not like people went to see the Hanover films for Ed Helms. Is there another film the guy starred in that was a hit? I mean, if that's not the case, then why not just get Anthony Michael Hall? I don't understand that. Doesn't make sense to me. God of War is getting a movie and it has a new pair of writers. Really? Who are the writers? The writers of God of War now. Michael Fassbender is signing the star in Assassin's Creed. Whatever. They're doing a film version of Deus Ex. Okay. Uh, Patrick Mellon and Marcus Dunstan are writing a great. Yeah, they wrote Feast, but they also wrote Piranha 3 Double D, Double Dicks. Great. And they wrote like they wrote like some of the later Saw sequels. Oh, fuck. Fuck that. Maybe it depends on what director they get. Just don't get John Gulliger. Please. 
This guy asked a good question. You already had Clash of Titans and Wrath of Titans, so what can you do? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Chain Tame just another fucking role to play Evil King Evil. Why? I've, there's so many better actors than Channing Tatum. Fuck Channing Tatum. Oh, he's good at magic. I don't care about Magic Mike. Brett Eisner is directing a new movie. That's the same guy who directed The Crazies. Speaking of The Crazies. For a Stretch Armstrong movie. They're doing a Stretch Armstrong movie. A movie on Stretch Armstrong. A movie on Stretch Arm Strong. Great. Great. Stretch Arm Strong movie. It's what we need. It's what we fucking need. Let's uh, see. Other than that, uh. Apparently Jessica, Jessica Biel is Viper and Wolverine sequel. Really, Jessica Biel. It's not that good of an actress. Live action Street Fighter series in the works. What the fuck is this? Captain at San Diego Comic Con, Captain announced they will develop a live action series based on the popular Street Fighter video game, which is called Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. Assassin's Fist? The new show will focus on Ryu and Ken as they live in sub-Japan. The boys are unknowingly the last practitioners of the ancient fighting style known as Assassin's Fist. The story follows them as they learn about the mysterious past of their master, Guten, and the tragic and dark legacy of the Assassin's Fist style. For a second, I made it sound like fucking Double Dragon. The project will be directed by Joey Ansa, who's behind the animated film Street Fighter Legacy? What animated film is that? Oh god, Legacy is in the title. Well, it's not in the title of this new show, at least. This takes the story we're about to start, the origins and motivations of Ryu, Ken, Guten, and Akuma. This will become the definitive blast story from which further epic adventures will follow. How about this? How about you actually make a Street Fighter? About a tournament. A tournament. You know, Street Fighter, fighting in the streets? Just make that. Just make a tournament movie. It's not that fucking hard. For fuck's sake. What do I know? It's not that fucking difficult, Hollywood. Uh, I saw a new trailer for a new Aaron Eckhart film. It's an action thriller called The Expatriate. Actually looks pretty cool. To be honest, this actually looks better than Taken 2. <laughs> Basically, Aaron Eckhart plays an ex-CIA agent who's with his estranged daughter. The forced to be on the run when his employers marked them both for termination as part of a wide-reaching international conspiracy. Um, the trailer I found on www.worstpreviews.com is called The Expatriate and I really liked it. I, I thought it was, it was a good trailer. Again, it looked better than it's almost a, it looks better than Taken 2. That's sad, but it does and I like Aaron Eckhart so uh, I'm sure there's more movie news. Uh, I know Arnold was asked about Twins 2, and he says he liked to do it, but, you know, as long as there's a good script, which makes sense. Um, oh, one interesting thing, I guess to end it off here, I guess I could end it with this. I know Jackie Chan said he was retiring. But it's, he's retiring from my like big, huge. He'll still do action films, but as in big, huge, epic action film, he's doing one more. Like Balls to the Wall. But he'll still do, like, you know, other, you know, little stuff. 
Uh, but his last big, big one is Chinese Zodiac. He was at Comic Con. He had Jackie Chan actually mentioned the possibility of working with Stallone in a future Expendables movie. Apparently, Jackie Chan had been offered a role in Expendables 2, but couldn't do it because of a scheduling clash with Zodiac. Chan seemed enthusiastic enough about the idea of joining his action contemporaries in one of the movies, though. So, basically it's saying there's a good chance that Jackie Chan will be in Expendables 3. And honestly, even though I haven't seen the film, I mean, I'd be down for Expendables 3. I'm down with that than, you know, any other films coming out. But if you need to get Jackie Chan... And then maybe since it's 2012, 2013, I know Stallone, he has the tomb coming out. Uh, maybe he wants to, you know, take a break after what's happened now. And then there's other, been other movies linked like Grudge Match. Uh, there's something about sort of a bad lieutenant type of movie. There's... Uh, Ramble 5, there's a lot of ideas, so even if he does one or two of them, you know, that go to 2014, and that's when Wesley Snipes gets out of jail, so, you know, if you do Expendables 3, you get Jackie Chan, and get Wesley Snipes, and get Steven Seagal's fat ass in there somewhere, even if it just be smacked in the face, you know, at, at least do that. I mean, I would like to see Olivia Gruner and Martha Cut, but that's never going to happen. I just got to let that go. It sucks, but I got to let it go. But, you know, at least get Jackie Chan in there, for fuck's sake. You know, come on, at least Jackie Chan. So, we'll see. And yeah, I know he's retiring from, like, the big, big action films, but, you know, from doing little stuff, he'll still keep doing that. But, uh, either way, that's how I end it. So, either way, uh, thanks for watching. And last but not least, again, uh, sh uh, condolences to Sylvester Stallone and his family for their loss. You know, stay Stallone. You know, take care. And rest in peace. Bye-bye.